Hey everybody, Swab here. Uh, welcome to part two of me trying to build the Eternal Cathedral uh, corset from Rampart Mother Train. Um, it's all Archon product um, out of Poland, so it's all their own CNC. They make it all there. Uh, for today, I'm going to be looking at um, cutting some of these out of sprue, cleaning a couple up, filing off some of the rough edges, and, and that's going to be this. So uh, if you know how to do all this kind of stuff, you probably don't need to watch this video. If you have not done much of this kind of work, maybe you do. And if you just want to watch a video while you're also doing some kind of modeling work, then hey, I'll be on in the background. Alrighty. Um, you don't need a cutting mat, obviously, for this. I use construction um, cardboard a lot. I'm not going to do anything that's even going to require like a cutting on the cutting mat, but I got this cutting mat just recently because it was on sale for seven bucks, and so I said, why not um, use cutting mat? So. I got a little pair of nippers here and um, nice flat. They do a good job. I was using something else before, like a small pair of, um, not a small pair of nippers basically, and they were terrible. And so I spent $7 at Princess Auto. Uh, I swear I'm not making money up advertising Princess Auto, but I also bought this at Princess Auto. Um, and they've been cutting really nice. So all I'm doing is I'm just getting them nice and close in. It cuts like a butter, basically, and I'm just cutting along, cutting all the edges. Usually it'd be like watching a video or playing D&D &D or doing something mindless as I cut these. I'm trying to find the best way to kind of keep all this in camera. Normally I'm not really thinking about that. Uh, and just going all the way around. You can probably just cut like three out of the four sides and then this wiggle the thing loose. Um, but that's fine. What I do like about doing this is I kind of like see where the things are. You can kind of see where it's going to leave more material for you to clean away. These corner ones are kind of a pain. Yeah. And free that guy and you'll see along the top here like there's all these little rough spots. Um, that's not terrible. This one's pretty bad. You know, I could take my nippers and clean it up. Here, you see it's like right on the design, which is brutal. That one's came cleaner than some of the other cuts I've had. There is like a really thin, thin mold line that runs along here. I'm, can you see it on camera? Do, 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 do. It's hard to get something like this. Yeah, so there's this thin mold line. Gone fuzzy again here. Uh, that runs along the edge here, or along about uh, one quarter of the way up. I'm not going to worry about cleaning it, because honestly, most of the time it's going to be flat again, another piece. And then i got all these pieces along here. These you want to make sure they're nice and flat, because otherwise this thing's going to be rocking back and forth. So, uh, I'll trim off a piece. Maybe I'll trim off one of these little dudes here. And again, just relaxing, cutting these guys up. This one is one of the, this is the one that gives you the less, or gives me a lot of the trouble. It's this bar that runs in here um, for the in plastic injection where it's all attached to this sprue. And this is the one that was really tough to clean up. There might be a better way to clip it, but I don't know that. If you do, leave me a note or a comment. Tell me all the things I'm doing wrong. Again, I literally have never built train before and I've cut things out of sprues. I don't know, one box of Tyranids I've cut out of sprues because the other Tyranids I've built were metal. And I've done not even a whole core, well, I've done the whole core set basically of uh, Forbidden Fortress, uh, one of the Shadows of Brimstone games. Um, but they also that plastic I find it cuts different than this plastic. This kind of is like a, almost feels softer. And here I'm just going to break these guys off. I'm going to save these little nibs. My goal um, is to bake some sprue glue down there. All the things I've looked into in the hobby that I'd love to do, um, sprue glue is one of them. I've been using Citadel glue so far. Um, I think I want to try Tamiya, or however you pronounce that, something like that. Um, Right? and some kind of other plastic glue, just to try something else different. My issue with the Citadel is that um, once in a while I've got to pull out the little needle applicator tip and i got to 
to burn the glue out of it, which probably is not healthy to do. So anyway, after I cut a couple pieces, I'm not going to cut all this out in video because no one else watched that. Then I'm going to file it. And a lot of times I used, used to metal file. I recently switched over to using like emery boards. These are dollar store ones. They're sassy. And they're like 16 of these cardboard emery boards for a buck. Uh, maybe a buck 25. Can't remember if I got them from like Dollar Tree or Dollarama or, or whatever. Uh, then work on this guy. Uh, I think Shadow and Sons is a YouTube channel. I've looked at them because they do a lot of Archon stuff. I think they suggested this. Uh, I somebody else will feel bad, but I feel like it was them. Um, oh, there's another big chunk here. There, so. Just cleaning it all up. Anyway, what I like about the Emery file is, first of all, they, um, oh, here's a trick that I've been using. Cutting mat's cool, but it's gonna go away. I'm taking an old catalog. And I don't think this is a trick anybody taught me. It's just something that I've done from filing other stuff when I was a kid. Um, like cleaning parts up. I take catalog, and I'm doing my filing over the catalog, and that way all my, like, well, most of my plastic will, uh, most of my plastic bits will fall there, and I can just kind of, like, shake it out outside after. The reason I mentioned using the catalog for, um, or some papers like this, you know, small magazine, to do your sanding over top of this. You can see I get all this powder here. Um, as I'm sanding, I might, instead of having to like get up from a workstation and blow it, dust it off, especially if it's like starting to get on my hands a little bit more or, or touching the page with stuff and then picking stuff back up and then getting more and more uh, of, that, of that dust picked back up, I can just like turn the page and I can work over top of this clean page and I kind of keep going. That way I don't have to clean my station off. I can just keep um, sanding and flip the page, and then I can just either go back and shake it all out um, over the top of the garbage can or whatever later, or, um, you know, just once I've done enough of these pages, just when the catalog's done, kind of take care of that, right? It kind of traps all that in there, as long as I'm not shaking the book around, uh, it holds it all in. So that's why I suggest using the catalog, is you can kind of work, and as that gets really dirty and dusty, just flip the page and do the next one like that. And you can do it with all kinds of different stuff, but that's, that's why I do that. All right, now back to the video. And I'm just going right over the top. It might destroy a bit of detail on the top. Um, I'm not super worried about that. I find if I'm just knocking out the detail, knocking them out once in a while, and I'll feel long and it feels smooth, I'm pretty happy. You'll see there's lots of dust. It's probably not the best stuff to be breathing in. So, wearing a mask or doing somewhere ventilated. And since I cannot feel it with my nails, I'm pretty happy. Like, I can still see a little bit of it. Um, that's super smooth. I don't think it'd be like, much cleaner. So I might do a little go over top of. Anyway, the reason I use the emery boards is they're bendable. Um, <laughs> they're cheap, so I could throw them away if I really want to. Once in a while, I, like, bang them out. That kind of help extends the life on them a little bit. Same with your metal file, right? Just drop it and... Not from too high, you don't want to damage a metal file, but yeah. But anyway, I'm liking this emery board. Um, it can kind of fold around things if you want to do something a little more rounded, for example. That's where I kind of think it's cool. Not that we really need it for this. Um, but as I'm doing this, and it's hard to see, you probably see on camera, but there's all these little bits now of um, this white. And I'm running right along the whole thing. Again, not needed. You could just be doing it at the points. If this was a model, I'd be a little more particular. But since it's not, I'm not at all worried. And again, it's all smooth. There are little bits. I'm definitely going to be washing these, I think, before I spray them, just to make sure I get all the stuff out. Maybe run the dust buster over them or something. Because um, I do notice that there's little bits of plastic dust that get stuck, especially in this bottom groove. Um, I just don't need them there. But, yeah, it smooths up really fast, really nice. And the emery board is amazing. There are a couple pieces that require something that's a little bit thicker than this. Or, sorry, uh, thinner. And um, maybe I'll cut that piece out next. Yeah, I can still feel that piece. Again, not a huge deal because it's going to be up against that pillar, and I think the way the magnets are placed, I don't think it's going to sit super, super flush. The more 
smooth, I get these little extra bits. The more flush it's going to fit, of course, but... Just hitting them up a little bit, smooth it out. I'm hoping with the paint it'll hide a lot of it. The ones I put caps on, like the little gargoyles or um, little roof turret bits. I'm sure they have a fancy, fancy name. That cathedrals, those cathedral spires. Um, will hide a lot of that imperfection in the paint. I'm hoping it'll hide a lot of that, but if it doesn't, it doesn't. Again, I'm just learning. If you need a spot where you need to file something that's round, um, I still use metal file for that, right? I got this round file. Um, kind of sneak in and kind of do the edges. So anything that's kind of roundish, um, well, concave, I can use this to clean it up and get in those small spots with this round file. Anything smaller than that, at this point, I'm not worried about. Um, so we'll do that. I'm going to clip out one of these tree trunks. I really want to see what it's like. Maybe I'll clip out this guy here. But the goal is to do this relatively quickly because the dream, of course, is to work on your models more on your terrain. However, um, I'm really excited about this set. So if your focus is like get this train done to like play kill team on the weekend or something, that might not be your perspective. And I also don't have a million hours of free hobby time. It's kind of limited. I'm going to spot this kind of around. I might uh, let's take a look here. Let's see if that gets some focus. So here, you can see this little nub is a little bit on a rounded spot. I'm going to try to hit that with the, with the metal file here. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Cleans it up enough so it doesn't really exist. So let's see how this thing works here. Here we go. So here we got that wall piece on the top of this. And I'm just going to pop this down into the peg. And... Eh. I don't love that. Maybe it's supposed to go a different way. Could go from here and I could put like another building piece somehow. If it was like a 45 degree angle, that'd be perfect. Yeah, but it does fit really nicely cut there to clearly sit like that. So I don't know what that piece is for. Oh, this is only half of a piece. All right, we need to cut this bad boy out. It's got a little notch right in here. That's where this thing goes. So you know what? Let's cut that out. I want to see this piece in action. I'm not going to glue it right now. Um, I'm just going to hold it and see what it looks like. I don't know how hobbyists on YouTube always hold everything as the right spot for the camera. Especially to get this thing focused for the camera. Because I'm looking at what I'm trying to cut and the camera's trying to decide what it's supposed to be focusing on. And it's thinking the magazine under here, the catalog under here. I'm not going to clean this up, but there. Glue that in there. I got that long chunk of tree, and I wonder. Yeah, see. I feel like this would be nice to like reach across to another piece. Of building. Okay, anyway, so that's a chunk of that branch. I'm gonna have to play with it some more and see how that all works together. Um, yeah. So that's basically what you're doing is you're just clipping and cleaning. And I've just been clipping and cleaning. Uh, if you got a really thin piece, of course, I'm trying to hold on to that. So that doesn't break under the pressure when you cut those thicker pieces. Um, these cathedral spire toppers, 
which again probably have like an actual name. They um, they've got a mold line all the way through, which I do actually care about because I feel like this big flat surface I leave that mold line. Um, it's gonna not look great. So again, I'm just kind of going over the whole thing as best I can, sneaking into the cracks. I'm not going to worry about the mold line up at the top there. It's pretty thin and because of the way it looks, it might just make sense and look natural there. But yeah, not bad. Mostly gone. That spot, I think, should just cover with paint fine. And it's got some nice cracking there. The other side, of course, and I got to do the mold line on that side too. Same thing. Just go over it with the emery board or um, file and clean it up. Last thing I should show you before I end is cutting these guys because these are a bit different. You know, we talked about how like hard it is to like sneak in there. Yeah, you can't even get in there to cut these. So one option, cut the sprue um, with the, not these nippers, but a different pair of pliers, right? And then that'll get that space for you. And then you can just fold it back and bend it. So you could cut here with a pair. Um, you could cut pair clippers, say like here and here, and then here and here and just fold it off. Right, wiggle it and pop it. Um, you'd want to use something not like these because it is a thicker chunk of plastic. You don't want to damage your clippers. Um, or I'm going to get maybe a little hobby saw. So this guy here, um, I've clipped up along the top and on the bottom because I get at it. I'm just going to grab this little hobby saw here. This is one of these things that you would rather do not on camera. I thought. But <clears throat> I'm gonna actually just snap off the other side. So, cause I feel like that's probably gonna make less of a mess. All right. So, little hobby saw. And that's what we ended up using for that. Don't love it. Wouldn't recommend it. But, um, so I don't know if exacto would be better or not. I might play with it and see which way I like more. Doing that nice and smooth. There is a little bit of a mold line all the way around this piece. And I am going to try to clean that up as best I can. Okay, so not bad. Little dots there are probably going to show up in the paint. Those are pretty smooth. They may or may not. But again, I'm not too worried about it because they're just little platforms. Some of them are going to be against walls. These ones won't be. These will be the ones that will be exposed. Um, but not bad. There's a little bit of a mold line there. And now it's gone. Again, I know that's going to leave a little bit of an impression, but it's actually like sunk down into the plastic. So I have to sand a whole pile or fill it with some milliput or green stuff, and that's not going to happen. A little bit of a mold line there still. But generally, okay, you see all the dust coming off that. That's part of it from the emery board, from the sand on the emery board. Part of it's from the plastic. Yeah, so there's most of the pieces. I didn't do a big piece um, because they're all already taken apart and cleaned up. I could have done some of these bits, 
but um, I think it's pretty self-explanatory what I'm doing here. Clipping it with some clippers, cheapy clippers, or you know, spend as much money as you want on clippers, I guess. Um, I file it over top of this so I can just get rid of all this dust and stuff and outside. Um, I'm gonna have to clean these guys up a little bit more, obviously. Um, I'm probably gonna wash a lot of these before I spray them. Partially fingerprints getting all over them as I work with them. Partially because some of that get all that some of that dust off. Um, yeah, so there we go. That is the next step done or will be done. I'm sure I'm gonna cut right now to uh, all the stuff spoiled out. Okay, so once you've got everything uh, clipped out and sanded, this is what you should have off the sprues. Uh, the only things I haven't cut is I didn't cut these pieces here. I have these extras because I don't think I'm going to use them. I also haven't cut out any of the pegs or the other sides of these. I think they're so small uh, and so quick to probably clean up that I'm just going to uh, cut them uh, as I need them to glue them on for the magnets. And that goes for the same for all these sprues, right? The center spots are all um, not cut out yet. Um, but here, so we've got um, four of these bowl sections, and four of these bowl sections, and of course they're double-sided, sorry, in that first one, double-sided there, and you'll see that they're all missing that their other side of the pillars, and that is what all these short pillars up here are for. They'll also, um, three of them will also go in these ruined sections. There's get three of these guys. Um, once you put all those ruins on, or all those pillars on, you should have, it looks like, five left over uh, that aren't needed. I don't know if there's a reason for that or not. Maybe if you ordered it in a different setup or style, they had room on the sprue. Um, so one option might be to save them and make them into something else. Or um, even though they don't fit together, um, some plastic glue will hold those snug and you can build yourself two extra pillars and have one extra piece left over. Or use them as rubble and put them on a little base or something, put some flocking and some rubble around them and kind of leave them on the ground. It'll be a little bit of scatter terrain. So you have a little picture of those. Now you're going to have two of, two of these guys. Here's the back side. Again, with those longer pillars needed to complete the other side of them. And you have two of these guys. One door, and of course, we talked about this from the previous Kickstarter. Um, this is that extra door piece that I bought. Um, I don't think you get it separately unless you get it through them, but I think yeah, that door here um, will fit in there if I wanted to have a closed door, for example. So, again, this is not in the core set. This is something that I bought separately from them. Um, I think it was $3 US for that. And then for long pieces, you're going to have all these uh, damaged and broken pieces too, right? And some of them will be just be single. There's part of that door we're talking about in the rubble. Um, and some of them will have their half pillar here. So they already got the pillar built on and some of course they just have that spot for the magnets or the posts right here and here um, to attach to a pillar. And when you're cleaning them up, just make sure they're able to sit flat. And of course, then you got all of the tall pillars you need for those. That'll clip into the back side. Got all your branches, which I have not actually cleaned up yet. Um, and all your little gargoyles and lights and things. Some of these little pieces that go across from these, from your other posts to some of those freestanding posts. Uh, these are the ones that, these ones are strike up sets. There's sets here where you got the two different ends, so they'll 
right, and they'll clip in together. Make sure they both go in the same direction. Right, and honestly, <laughs> you probably don't need to glue that. Uh, I might, and, and maybe put a little bit of glue here to try to melt that seam bit. But I mean, it goes together pretty good. So you'll get enough for four of those. There's one, two, three, four. Um, and these things can go across. Right, it's an interesting little archway or support. So those are pretty cool. Again, that's why I talked about the fact that magnets, putting magnets through all of the holes is going to make it so these things are, are difficult to do. Um, and I talked about earlier is you could, or in the other video maybe, you, know, you could cut this post off and put a magnet there instead. Um, right, so it'd be magnetized. And that would work for some pieces, that'd be difficult for others. Get your four cathedral toppers. A lot of these we looked at earlier. And I cleaned them up okay -ish. There's still a little bit of mold line if you look in the right light. Um, but not too worried. And you got your four little toppers. You got your six gargoyles. Yep. Your six gargoyles. For the most part, all I really did was sanding the tops or the wings where they were attached to the sprue. There's a little mold line that was right here. And I kind of sanded that off. Maybe not super great on this one. Maybe I'll pick it up a little bit, but there was a mold line that came right here and there's a spot underneath here. But since that's going down into the hole, um, right down into the top, it's not going to matter. So I just didn't bother with those. Spray paint these later and probably going to be some glue, some um, blue tack and stick them on to a paint stick so I can spray them. Got your, your six pieces there, your six um, floor, raised floor walkway pieces, right in their supports. I put this guy together, haven't glued him yet, but that's a piece of scatter terrain. You could probably place it on top of something if you wanted, on top of a wall piece, but it doesn't have a little peg for it. I think it'd look better just as a individual piece of scatter terrain. So anyway, so that's all you've got there. Um, and just sand and file everything. Make sure you got most of the bad mold lines off. You can scrape the mold lines. There's not many mold lines really to worry about scraping. They did a pretty good job that way. Um, so the ones that I really had, I just sanded. I didn't even bother scraping them because they were pretty easy to sand because usually we're at a spot where I had a thicker uh, chunk where it attached to the sprue. And now you've seen everything there. And so the next time we get together for this video, I'm going to be gluing the um, the pillars, columns together, uh, and attaching magnets. So that's the next step. Uh, and then after that, give them a quick clean and then paint them up. Uh, prime them and then paint them. So next time we'll be getting together, we will uh, do some magnets and some gluing. Alrighty. Talk to everybody again. Take care. Bye-bye.